So today we're going to look at the um, section A of paper one of your GCSE history. And this is the section that deals with World War II London, it's your historic environment. And you should be spending on these questions on World War II London 25 minutes approximately um, of the paper. Um, because the paper, as you can see, in total is 1 hour 15. And the London questions are worth a third of the marks. So obviously you should be spending a third of your time on this, which is about 25 minutes. So that's what you should aim to do. There's only three questions. They're quite short. 25 minutes on this section A um, would be ideal. So if we look at the first question that you will get, this is your describe two features question. And in the case of the 2019 paper, which we're going to be looking at today, um, you can see that the question is very specific. It's on the V2 attack on Deptford in 1944. And the lesson here really is you do need to know your stuff quite well um, on this section A. So because the questions can be very precise, such as this one, and lots of candidates on this paper did not know about the attack on Deptford or didn't know much about it and as a result of which this question was very difficult for them to do. So you do need to know your stuff precisely. You need some nice precise examples from your learning. Um, so bear that in mind in your revision, please. And all you're doing on this question is identifying something about the V2 attack on Deptford in feature one, and then adding a second sentence that tells me a little bit more about that. And then on feature two, your second feature, another thing about the V2 attack on Deptford, and then just a little bit more in a second sentence explaining that. So you're looking for four sentences in total on this question, spending about five minutes on it. Um, and you can see by the nature of the question that you could, on feature one, talk about the Deptford uh, attack and something about it. For example, about it was an attack on Woolworth shop and 160 people were killed. Um, in your feature two, you could talk about the V2 and the idea that the V2 attacks, it, it, this was a rocket with a warhead and that obviously they, they were silent and came down at high speed and your second sentence is talking about these weapons used towards the end of the war and um, very, very deadly um, aspects like that. So if we take an example answer on this, as you can see in front of you now, you can see that the candidate has identified a feature on the left-hand side and then said a given a second sentence that has just developed that a little bit, explained it a little bit more. And again, they've put down a second feature on the left-hand side and again explained it just a little bit more. If anything, the candidate here is possibly writing a little bit too much you are looking for identifying something about your um, chosen event and then just giving a little bit more explanation to it. So you're looking for no more than two sentences on each feature. Remember this question is only worth four marks. So you should not be spending a huge amount of time on it. Save your time for later on the paper. So no more than five minutes on this question. Now if we move on to question 2A, and you're good at these by now because you will have used these on paper 3, there is how useful question on paper 3 on your Russia paper. And this one is giving you two sources and asking you how useful they are for a, an inquiry into something. In the case of this, it's into morale in the east end of London during the Blitz. Now it's important to look at that tail end of that question there. This is not a generalised question that sort of says how useful are A and B. It is a question that's actually asking you how useful are they for an inquiry into something specific. So you do need to focus your answer on the exact inquiry, which in this case is morale in the East End of London during the Blitz. And this is worth eight marks, so we're probably looking for about 15 minutes on this um, because it does need a bit of time and a bit of thought. Uh, and you have got 25 minutes in total on section A. So 15 minutes, no more than that really. And you're looking for two paragraphs only on this. Your first paragraph deals with how useful source A is. Your second paragraph deals with how useful source B is. 
There is no need for a third paragraph where you compare between the two or you do an overall judgment. The judgment should be for each separate source. So your first paragraph is all about source A and whether you, how useful you think that is for an inquiry into morale in the East End of London during the Blitz. And your second paragraph is dealing with source B alone and how useful source B is for an inquiry into morale in the East End of London during the Blitz. So two paragraphs, keep, keep them separate if you can. Um, now if we look at source A, and we're just going to deal with source A today because you can have a go at source B yourself. But if you look at source A, the trick in this question is to make sure you are showing the examiner certain skills. So there are certain ingredients that your answer needs to display. And there are four really we should be looking at here. So your answer for source A should identify elements in the content that are useful. Secondly, you should bring in some of your own knowledge as well to ascertain how useful the source is. So is it accurate? Is, are the details correct? Are there important things perhaps that are being missed off here? The third thing is you need to consider the provenance of the source. So in other words, the nature, the origins and purpose, because that will help you assess how useful this is for your inquiry into morale. And then your fourth ingredient is we need a judgment. How useful is this source into the inquiry into morale that you're doing? So we are looking for those four ingredients being there. Um, the content, own knowledge, provenance, and then finally judgment. And as we shall see later, if all those things are trying to address how useful it is, that will get you into level three, the higher marks. If you're just use, showing that you can use provenance, that you can use the content, that you've got a bit of own knowledge, but you're not using them for assessing how useful this source is and answering the question, then you're not necessarily going to get into that level three. So if we quickly look at source A on the left hand side now, um, there will be useful things in the content there, otherwise they won't be giving you the source. Um, and if I'm investigating morale in the East End of London, I can see that people are not very happy because, and I quote, King and Queen were booed by some East Enders who were angry. Um, and there were some riots and, and a food warehouse was smashed open. Um, so there are some aspects in that first bit that show that morale wasn't good. So this is useful, this source, it's helping us address that inquiry into morale of the East End of London during the Blitz. But having said that, on the other hand, if you go later through the source, there is some content there that says that even people suffered dreadful experiences. Um, there, there were masses of ordinary people in vital roles that did help to lift morale, and there were acts of courage. So this is a mixed source. It's suggesting to start with that morale is, is low, and there are some examples of that. But it's also suggesting that there are examples of things that happened that, that indicate that morale was good in the East End of London too. Um, so please go through the content. This is your first ingredient. Go through the content because there will be things in there that help you with your inquiry. And obviously this makes the source really quite useful. So I'm starting to form a judgment already here that the content is suggesting that this is, is really useful to us um, if we're inquiring into morale in the East End of London during the Blitz. Um, and, you know, it's, I know from my own knowledge that the King and Queen were booed when they went round, when they toured and visited, because people were angry that the Queen was in the Buckingham Palace and living in luxury. And I, I know that the Queen was... Um, commented that she she was pleased when Buckingham Palace was eventually hit because she felt that she could look the East End in the eye when she visited. Um, she sort of understood what they were going through when her home was hit. Um, as well as that too, I, I do know that it was difficult in the early days of the Blitz in the East End um, that... You know, you're talking about an area which really got hit because of the docks. It was a big target by the Germans. Um, it was a dense population and it was incredibly shocking in those early days. And in some ways, 
um, the government was unprepared for what happened in the east end of London at the start of the Blitz. So this, you know, is quite useful again, this source, because there are things that I recognise that are accurate. And I know as well from my own knowledge that people did volunteer as air raid wardens and emergency ambulance ambulance drivers and firefighters were important because a lot of the warehouses were set on fire and the Germans used incendiary bombs as well um, to deliberately set those on fire. So you, you can see that how I'm using my own knowledge to develop a judgment on how useful this source is for our inquiry and a lot of things in this source are are supported by things in my own knowledge they chime with elements that i know about the attacks on the blitz um attacks in the east end in the early part of the blitz so you should be able to develop some ideas from your own knowledge to either support or um, disprove what this source is saying but at the moment we're forming that judgment that this is a very effective very useful source for this inquiry so that's my two ingredients so far I've looked at the content there's some own knowledge there my third one is the provenance the nature origins purpose of this um, and this is useful to me because um, this was um, an account by somebody who was actually there in the east end of London during the blitz and if you read through the source, their, their memory is very precise and, and very detailed. So I think this is this is a useful eyewitness account. On the other hand, it's he's remembering his experiences as a child. Um, and children have different experiences uh, of situations as adults. And perhaps he wasn't quite aware of what exactly was going on. Perhaps he was relying on hearsay from, from what adults told him. Um, and again, you've got this idea that this is an account that was published in in the year 2000, which is, what, 50-odd years after these experiences. And in time, your memories can, can perhaps change a little bit, although the memories seem pretty vivid in this, um, which makes it very useful for us who are inquiring into what morale was like in the east end of London um, during the Blitz. So my overall judgment here is that this source is very useful to us because it's it's detailed, it's precise, it, it's, it, it's supported by my own knowledge. The provenance is good because um, the person was actually there at the time. Um, so overall my judgment is that this is very useful. So if you look at the um, mark scheme and the indicative content from the examiner on the right hand side, you might want to pause this and think about some of the things um, that the examiner is suggesting you might mention in an answer here. But notice again, it's the idea of content. It's about nature, purpose, origin, provenance. And again, we want to see some own knowledge too to help you shape your judgment. But if you are looking at the mark scheme on the left, hopefully you will appreciate that to get into that level three, to get into the six, eight marks for this question, it's all about um, how provenance, content, own knowledge affect the usefulness of the source to, to support reasoning about the utility, the usefulness of this source to apply criteria for judgments on their utility. So everything must be done with the idea of, all right, how useful is this? So if you're going to talk about provenance, does that make this source useful or not into your inquiry into morale? If you're going to talk about own knowledge, is that helping you determining how useful this source is for an inquiry into morale? Everything should be done with the idea of assessing the utility of this source. How useful is this going to be if you're a historian looking into this specific issue? And again, you might want to pause this and investigate the example answer here on the right hand side, um, which does score very highly. And why does it score very highly? Well, if you read it, it it's got those ingredients in it. It, there is some own knowledge. They do take some bits out of the content and, and chat about 
whether that makes the source useful the inquiry or not this candidate does consider the provenance of the source there is a judgment look at the bit at the end um, overall source A is very useful for an inquiry into this because and they explain it so it has those four ingredients in we've talked about and if this candidate can do the same for source B the photo then they're going to score eight out of eight on this question you can see the sort of size of the paragraph you're writing um, probably a, you know this candidate obviously can write a lot in the time that's given because you're looking at half of 15 minutes here. Um, but if you can put together a nice paragraph that has those four ingredients in it for this question, then um, it should secure you very high marks. And again, on the next slide, you can see on the left hand side um, a little bit of the examiner's comment. You might want to pause it. And again, explaining why the examiner felt that particularly this bit for source A was very, very effective. Which brings us on to question 2B. About 20 minutes of the exam has gone now, so you've got about five minutes for this one. Um, and this is the follow-up question. And you'll get a grid on the exam paper, which looks like the question on the left. And this is, OK, we've been considering morale. How would you follow this up? What would you do next if you wanted some more information? Now, this question is designed to put you in the experience of the historian. So if you were looking into this, where would you go to next? What would be your next step if you're writing a book, say, about what morale was like in the East End of London? So it is linked to source A. Um, and the first question is asking you to just pick a detail, name a detail in source A that you would investigate. So the best way of doing this is perhaps to um, quote, pick a little quote. So you could pick, for example, the bit about the, the food warehouses in the East End being smashed open. Perhaps that's what you want to investigate a little bit further. Um, you could pick um, something about um, the experiences of ordinary people in vital roles. Perhaps that's the bit that you're going to investigate further. So you just are quite simply picking something from that source that you're going to look into, you're going to inquire into. You might do it by just a simple quote, that's all. You then need to develop a question you would ask about that. So, all right, what what are you going to look into? So... You might, your question might be, um, were there other examples of food warehouses in the East End that were broken into during this period? Or if your detail in source A that you're following up is the involvement of masses of ordinary people in vital roles, your question might be, um, what were the vital roles that lifted morale during this period? So your question that you're asking should link to the detail in source A that you are following up. They must be connected. This whole thing must be connected here. All four answers on question 2B should relate to the detail that you're trying to follow up in source A. The third bit is what type of source I could use. So this is where um, you're in the eyes of a historian. Where would you go? to find that information out, get that answer to that question that you're asking. What would you look into? And then the final bit is quite simply, what information might this source give you to help you answer your question? So we're just going to look into that, as you can see, with um, the example answer in front of you now on the left hand side with the exam mark scheme on the right hand side for this. And if we're looking at left hand side, you can see that the candidate is following up the detail in the source that talks about the involvement of um, masses of ordinary people in vital roles lifting morale. That's the thing they're focusing on. The question they're asking is, all right, what were these vital roles? What specifically were these roles that helped lift morale? The type of source they've decided to use here is they've thought, well, if I was a historian, I would probably look back at local newspapers in the, in the East End of London at the time. Now, this is probably a little bit briefer. You do have to be quite specific. So I would be tempted where it says what type of source I could use. Um, 
rather than just write local newspaper, say a little bit more. So local newspaper um, for job ad- advertisements or local newspaper for for stories about um, the the blitz and, and what was done to put out the fires. Just a little bit more detail. Local newspaper is a bit general, a bit bland. You should be writing a little bit more than two words. What type of source I could use? More than two words, please. Um, a little bit more. You've got time. You've got five minutes on this question. So just tell me a little bit more about that local newspaper. Um, the final question is how this might help answer my question. Well, um, in that local newspaper, it could show us job advertisements that are often featured in local newspapers, you know, talking about what sort of um, jobs are available, you know, firefighters, ambulance drivers, that sort of stuff. Um, it could have some stories in it that talk about um has interviews with people um, at the time, firefighters, ambulance drivers, airway precaution wardens, with, with uplifting stories that show that these vital roles lifted morale at the time. So um, you need to avoid, again, being general with this final bit. Now, if you look on the right-hand side of the paper, um, down at the bottom, it talks about results plus examiner comments. And... That bottom bit, it says, while the suggestion that a local newspaper would include jobs that were up for grabs is very generalised, when taken in conjunction with the proposed question, it is clear that the candidate hopes to discover appeals for volunteers, maybe in key roles, such as air raid warden, that would lift morale. But the bit I want you to look at is the results plus examiner tip on the right-hand side, where it says, make sure the final bit, The final section explains how the information in the suggested source could be used to answer the proposed question. Do not just say that the source would provide information to answer the inquiry. We want something specific here. So again, it's the idea of trying not to be too generalised on this question. Try and give specific examples on what type of source you could use. Try and be specific on how this might help answer my question. Um, Rather at the end, just saying, oh, it would give me some information. Okay, what information would would it give you that would help answer your question? Now, again, this is only worth four marks. It's only worth five minutes. So it's not a question you should get hung up on and spend seven or eight minutes thinking about very carefully and, uh, and what have you. Look at the fact that you're only given a few lines to write the answer. So they're not expecting much, the examiners here. But you should be looking at making sure that you are, once you've got your detail, that you would follow up the rest of the other three bits that you've got to fill in should directly lead on from that. So that's section A in your London World War II historic environment. You're looking at 25 minutes and your task now is probably have a go at the how useful um, question with, with the source B the photo of the royal family touring the east end have a go at that we're looking at half of 15 minutes so let's say seven and a half, eight minutes on that please but make sure you've got all those vital ingredients in that we talked about good luck